High School DxD character tier list. I found this tier list online, and we're just gonna go through and rank every character. Let's get to it. All right, so for the tiers, we have goats. These are like the best of the best. Then we have elite. These are the characters that I really like. And then they cool, and that means they cool, you know. I like them, but they could be better. Then you got mid, which means they're mid. Then you got they not cool, which is the opposite of they cool. And then we get ass. And obviously, they're ass. Yeah, so those are the tiers. So let's get into this. Oh yeah, this is anime only because I haven't finished the light novel yet. All right, so first up, we got Aika Kiryu. Uh, she's all right. You know, she's really funny in the show, but she's not really that good of a character. I like her, but she's not that crazy. She doesn't really stand out. She is really funny though, so that'll give her some bonus points. Definitely a mid-tier character. Then we got Ajuka Beelzebub. He's cool too, you know, he's all right. He has like 30 seconds of screen time though, so I mean, there's not much to say about him. Just a mid character to be honest. I don't hate him, I don't really like him either. He is really smart though, that is something I do know about him. He's one of the smartest characters. But yeah, Ajuka, he's mid. You got the fan favorite, Akino. I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I'm not really messing with Akino. Like, I don't really like her at all. I mean, she's just boring, she doesn't have any personality. I mean, there's just not much to say here. Did y'all hear that? It's one in the morning. Who could be at the door right now? I'm gonna go check it out real quick. You guys stay here. It's a package at my front door at this time of hour. What's going on? Let's see what's inside. It's a letter. It says, you'll regret this decision. Man, what is this guy talking about? What was that? I don't know why I did that. I paused everything just to make that little skit. It was supposed to be like an Akino fan breaking into my house and then tying me up. But it went from that to just straight up Akino jump scaring me. Hopefully I was able to scare some of you. Obviously I was just trolling with that Akino take. She's by far one of the best characters in this show, so she's at least elite, but I don't know if I would consider her a GOAT. The writers did focus heavily on her, but I feel like she loses too many fights to be considered a GOAT, but she is a fan favorite. I would say she's like an upper elite, lower GOAT tier. So yeah, Akino will have to go down in the elite tier. Next we got Albion. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know what to do with Albion. He only has like four lines in the show. I wanna put him in mid, but I don't think he does enough to be mid. Then again though, Azuka's in mid and he has like the same amount of screen time as Albion. So I guess I'll just put him in mid tier. Alright, next up we have Arthur Pendragon. I actually kind of like Arthur. I kind of like how polite he is. He did also save Asia. So yeah, he's a pretty cool character. I don't know if he's cool enough to be in the day cool tier though. I think you can like sneak him into that category. So just because this guy dresses nice and he seems like a cool guy, he'll go into the day cool category. Next we got Asia. I don't know why a lot of people don't like her. I mean, she's like one of the main characters and people seem to really not like her. Like the amount of hate I see her get is unreal. But yeah, Asia, she's a cool character. I mean, it's kind of disrespectful to leave her out of the elite tier. Like she's not the same level of elite as Akino, but she still should be in there. I mean, she gets a lot of screen time. She's an important character. She plays a huge factor in Issei's character and she doesn't really do anything to be hated she just has an annoying voice but that's kind of it she's definitely an elite character next we got my glorious king azazel i mean if you watch my azazel video you would know how i feel about this guy whatever he says goes he's the reason i wake up in the morning it's impossible for me to hate someone this cool he 1000 percent goes in the goat tier without a doubt and if you disagree you're just biased you're also wrong ugly and you have no friends if you disagree with me but yeah azazel best character in the show he's the goat next we have barkule i mean he's there he shows up in the show and he has some lines you know he's definitely a character in high school dxd i guess he's akino's dad that's something but yeah he's definitely mid like come on if you're saying anything but mid for this guy then you're just wrong again all right next we got biko i kind of like biko he's actually funny in the dub and i really like what he wears i don't know what it is but i kind of like his character design he doesn't really do much in the show but he's just one of those characters that i just like for some reason so yeah biko can go in the they cool tier next we got so so 
I love so so. I go into a lot more detail in my villains ranked video, but I really like how they did so so. Honestly, I would put so so in the elite category, one of the better villains in the show. But yeah, so so I think is a character that everyone should like. Definitely elite. Okay, next we got uh Kanla. This guy's kind of annoying actually. He's kind of whiny and like a loser. Like he just lets so so walk all over him. No drip, no girls, no friends. Kanla shitty name. What the hell is that name? Definitely a uh, don't like character. Next up we got Drake. I actually really like Drake. I feel like most people do. He's also really funny in the dub. And I mean that boost line. Like, it's iconic. Boost in the dub, sub, it don't matter where. Japanese, English, German. It sounds just great. And, I mean, just the relationship he has with Issei is just so good. Definitely a they cool character. Alright, next we got Diodora. I mean, come on, this guy is so ass. I challenge you to find a single person that actually likes this weirdo. It's an impossible challenge. I mean, they did a good job at making him unlikable, but bruh, like, he's the most ass character of all time. Why is he even a villain? I don't even know. He's on a different level of evil, and he's really weird. Definitely an ass tier character. Next up, we got my man Donaseek. Whew. I think I speak for everyone when I say this guy is something special. I mean, if you just analyze any scene that he's in, he's doing some dramatic shit. Like, every time we see him, he's posing for some reason. He's really, like, the only character that ever does this. But every time we see him, he has, like, a Ginyu Force pose. It's so weird. But he's so goofy, I actually kind of like it. But I'll put him in the mid category just because I like him. He gets a pass from me. All right, next up we got Falbium Asmodeus. I'm sorry. Who? No, actually, who the hell is this i guess he's one of the four satans but when the hell did he even show up in the show how'd they get a picture of him is this fan made or something this shit looks like a bigfoot sighting you know what i'm gonna make my own category a new category called who and that's exactly where this guy gets to go all right now we got Fafnir? All right, bro, this has to be a joke. These guys don't actually exist. Who the hell is Fafnir? I just looked it up, and this is a Zazel's dragon. He's still got to go in the who category, because he's only mentioned, like, twice in the anime. I mean, I guess he's a Zazel's dragon, so maybe I could get him up a little higher, but nah, he's staying right there. All right, then we got Fenrir. What do I even do about Fenrir? He's a damn dog. Like, how do I rank a dog? He doesn't have any dialogue. He just shows up in fights. I guess he ate Issei. I don't really like that. So I guess I could put him in the don't like category. Uh, then we got my guy Freed. Oof. I mean, y'all should know how I feel about Freed at this point. Just watch my Freed video if you don't know how I feel about him already. But I really like Freed because of how funny he is. I like dub Freed, by the way, not subbed Freed. Dub Freed is actually funny. And he's most definitely an elite tier character. And if you disagree, you probably get no attention from females or males. All right, next we got Gatsby. When I first watched the show, I didn't like Gasper that much because he was introduced as just like a crybaby he was really annoying at first but right when he like stood up and unfroze everyone in season two i started liking him a lot more i guess gasper could be in the elite category next we got gay or i really don't care about this guy the only reason i even remember him is because he was the guy that was growling once his little fog thing wore off <laughs> I don't know what that was about, but he really started growling. It was so weird. I definitely don't like him. He for sure goes into the don't like tier. Next, we got Issei's dad. Why is this guy even here? I mean, he's funny, I guess. So he can go into the mid category just for that. I mean, I guess he's the father of the main character, but does that really count as anything? Whatever, you can go into the mid category. Next, we got Grafia. Grafia is another character that I think most people are cool with. She's actually like the perfect example of a they cool character. You know, she's not too likable, but she's not hateable either. She doesn't really get that much screen time, so it's kind of hard to put her any higher than this. But when she does get screen time, she does what she needs to do, and she leaves. The perfect they cool character. All right, next we got Great Red. I don't really have an opinion on Great Red. I don't really like him. Don't really dislike him either he's hyped up as like the strongest character in the show but i mean he can't even talk so i'll have to put him in the mid tier i can respect the hype though next up we got hades i mean this guy shows up for what maybe 25 seconds he does have one of the hardest introductions in the show though he had me feeling a certain type of way but yeah i gotta put him in the mid category all right now we got heracles this guy is ass here i'll let Lashawn mccoy explain how ass this guy is he is like, does anyone actually care about him? You know, all of the characters in the Hero Faction were showing off their little balance breakers, and every single one of them had something cool to do. Except for this guy. This trash ass character did all that hyping up. He was like, Yeah, look at my balance breaker. And then what was his balance breaker? Growing spikes? 
and bombs. Like he actually just grew spikes on his shoulders and bombs in his hand. What the hell is that? They need to just erase him from all history. They might as well erase him from his original Greek mythology form just because of this adaptation of him. All right, next we got Edina. Another character that I think everyone likes. Definitely a elite tier character. You know, she's got her screen time. She's a likable character. She's funny too. For sure, elite character. Next, we got the main man himself, Issei. I mean, where else can I put him besides the goat tier? There's nowhere else I can put him. He's the main character. He's funny. He gets all the fight scenes, all the screen time, all the development. That's all Issei right there. Not much to say. That one should be pretty obvious. Next up, we got... I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. I don't really like her. Yeah, she's ass. No one really cares about her. Don't like, don't care, all that. Now we got... Excuse me, how am I supposed to say this name? Can someone please help me out here? Kala Warner? What the hell? You know what? She gets to go in the ass tier just for that trash ass name. Get the hell out of here. Alright, next we have Kataya Leviathan. I mean, I don't think anyone even likes this character. No one even cares about her. I think I'm the only person to ever talk about her. Don't really like her. Don't care about her. Next is my boy Kiba. I actually really like Kiba. And I think everyone really likes Kiba. The amount of heart Kiba has is just so beautiful. But Kiba is a good example of a character that's just fun to watch. All his fight scenes are really good, and they're all entertaining too. Kiba's just a very likable character. I mean, there's not much to say about him. Definitely an elite character. Next, we got Coca Bill. Mid, mid, mid. The most mid villain in the entire show. Another one who's kind of just evil just to be evil. And I mean, he didn't even get killed by the main characters. He got killed by Bali. He has a really deep voice, but that's all he's got going for him. The definition of a mid character right there. All right, next up is Konoko. Konoko is like on the line of goat tier. I don't know if I can get her into goat tier though. I might be able to sneak her in. Do I do it? Do I not? Eh. You know what? Let's spin the wheel and find out. The wheel says yes, so I guess Konoko will be in the goat tier. A low goat tier, but she's still in there. I think the goat is probably just going to be my top five. And honestly, I think Konoko sneaks into that five spot. Maybe the six, I don't know. But I really like her story and her character. Alright, next is Kuno. Uh, I actually like Kuno. What the hell is that? Oh my god, see? I didn't even mean it like that. Got the cops in my door for what, man? It doesn't even make no sense. You know what? I'ma handle this. Alright, for my own safety, Kuno is a very mid character and I'm not very fond of her character. Boo Kuno, boo. Alright, next we got Kuroka. Kuroka is a character that everyone seems to like. I feel like everyone likes her more than I do. Like, I've seen some people say she was their favorite character, and I definitely wouldn't go that far. But she's still a cool character. Very important in Konoko's development. She also has a decent character design too. But yeah, Kuroka is definitely a they cool character. This is me from the future, and when I was grabbing clips for Kuroka, I ran into this scene. And cuts a path between dimensions. Between dimensions? What are you, a parrot? Or was the baby red dragon dropped on his head? So like This scene made me laugh, so I think that'll add some bonus points for Kuroka. She comfortably sits in the day cool tier now. Then we got Lady Phoenix. She's damn near a Who character. Actually, you know what? She is a Who character. You one of them randoms. <laughs> Another character that just pops up for five seconds and leaves. I don't even think the voice actors would know who I'm talking about if I mentioned Lady Phoenix to them. Definitely a Who character. Now we got Lefei Pendragon. I think this is Arthur's sister. And I mean, she's alright. You know what? She was a fanboy for Issei, so I'll put her in the They Cool category. Because I did like that moment in the show. Then we got Leonardo. I don't like this little kid, to be honest. I just don't like the way he stares at me. He's just kind of weird looking. Not a big fan of Leonardo. Definitely a don't like character. Alright, next we got Loki. And I mean, this guy is just Loki. I said this in my little character ranking for the villains, but I mean, he's just Loki. I put him in the mid tier, but I'm not that big of a fan of him. Next up, we got Matsuda. I love this guy, especially in the dub. He's so hilarious. This is actually the funniest character in the show. Him and Motohama. I don't know why these two are separated. I'm gonna go ahead and rank them together. Matsuda and Motohama. Some of the easiest elite characters of all time. And the funniest characters in the show. Next we got Michael. And when I thought about the mid category, this is who I had in mind. This is the most mid character of all time. Like even his name is just mid. Like how many people do you know named Michael? I guarantee it's more than five. Like I got like four Michaels just in my family. And then you have him now. 
not doing anything at all times. Like he just sits there and watches everything. He's so mid, it's crazy. Then we got the Midgard Serpent. This is a snake. It's kind of like the Fenrir situation where like it's an animal. How do I even rank an animal? So because of that, he can go right with Fenrir in the don't like category. I'm being so for real when I say this. I stared at this name, Misla Bale, for like 25 seconds before I realized who this was. This is Cyborg's bomb. And I only knew that because of the last name. But I mean, who? Like, come on. I shouldn't not be able to tell who you are by your picture. An easy who character. All right, next we got Mattelt. I don't really like Mattel. I don't think anyone really likes Mattel. She's there. She's cocky. She's arrogant. She's like a wannabe Milton, but she's not funny with it. Speaking of Milton, where is Milton? This bum who made this list didn't even put one of the greatest characters on it, but Milton would for sure be in the elite category. Uh, Mattel goes in the don't like though. Anyways, next we got Melikus, another character that shows up for like maybe two minutes and then dips. He dresses nice, so I'll just put him in the mid category just because of that. Next we got Mr. Morisawa. How do you put this guy on the tier? list but leave Milton out of it. That doesn't even make sense. And you know what? I'm actually kind of mad about that. Just because of that, Mr. Morisawa, you go in the ass tier. This bum ass tier maker decided to put this random ass person over Milton. Anyways, next we got Issei's mom. She'll go right next to his dad in the mid tier. Nothing else to say about that. Alright, next we got Odin. I think Odin goes into the they cool category. He's funny and he actually does stuff. Like he fought off that group of people, that group of Chaos Brigade people. So Odin, in my book, he's a cool little character. I don't know, he kind of reminds me of like that one uncle that has all the weird crackhead stories. So yeah, Odin, I like him. Next we have Ophis. I actually like her. Her, him, her, I don't know. Actually, I'm pretty sure Ophis doesn't even have the gender. I like Ophis a little bit. She has like a nice little aura to her. You can tell that she's strong. She also becomes an important character later in the story. But for now, I'll just leave her in the day cool tier. Anyway, next we have Rase. Oh, this guy's a, mm, I don't really like this guy at all, actually. An easy ass tier character. Just this ugly ass dragon. And I don't think I will explain myself. Just know I don't like him. All right, next we got Ravel. I do like Ravel. She is a they cool character for sure, for sure, for sure. You no, know, she actually went from being annoying to being a very tolerable character. So just because of that, just because of that, she's a they cool character. Then we got Rainer. Ass. I don't think anyone likes Rainer. Actually, you know what? I'll put her in the don't like tier instead. She does play a huge role in the show, so I can't say she's complete ass. So she'll just be in the don't like tier. Next we got Regulus. He's not anything special, but I can appreciate his loyalty to Cyra Org. I mean, he cried when Cyra Org lost in the fight. That's some dedication right there. So because of that, he can go into the mid tier. Then we got the main love interest, Rias. I guess she can go in the GOAT category. I said it was my top five, and I definitely have her in my top five so yeah she's for sure in the goat category i mean she gets the most screen time out of all the girls she's very clearly issei's favorite and i mean she's the leader of the group too so it's hard not to like her she's a nice well-balanced character too She's strong and smart while also being a good leader. Her scenes with Issei are also obviously the best, and her relationship with Issei is better than all the other girls. She's also the fan favorite. This is the most popular character in the show. Definitely a GOAT tier. Next we got Riser. If we're talking about Riser before he made the character switch, he would probably be in the don't like tier. But because he made that change and he's a better person now, he's going to go in the day cool tier. Then we got Ross Weiss. This is the first time I've actually tried saying her name out loud. It's actually kind of hard. All right, I just looked it up and it says you say it Ross Weiss. Anyway, uh, yeah, she's another elite tier character. Being in Rius's peerage basically gets you into the elite tier. I do really like her as a fighter, though. Can't forget she was part of the plan to cut off Cyborg's arm. And I mean, everyone is so like close combated and fighting, so she's like a nice change very smart she's funny i would put her in the elite tier then we got cyra org cyra org has so much heart that it's just impossible for anyone to hate him i mean this guy was born with no powers and he still managed to become the strongest devil in his class just from hard work he's like the only person issei fights that isn't arrogant and his fight with issei is one of the best in the show i think i would put cyra org in the they cool tier but i don't think it's crazy to put him in the elite tier then we got Saji. I think Saji's actually kind of underrated. I haven't heard anything about him, to be honest. But Saji's actually funny. And I mean, he contributes a lot in the fights that he's in. He really single-handedly took down the fox. And he also caught Loki during the Loki fight. I think he's like borderline elite. So I can put him there. Next, we got Seek 
Vira. Who in the hell is this? Definitely a Who character, because I've never heard of her. I'm pretty sure this is actually just a made up character. So get your ass in the Who tier. Next, we got Sarah Fall Leviathan. This is another great example of a they cool character. Her scenes with Sona are actually really funny. I like them a lot. And she just wants to be a magical girl. She's, she's just Milton, but like with powers. So because of that, she goes into the they cool category. Then we got Shalba Beelzebub. I don't really like him. I wish we saw more of him. Actually, he comes back, so we will see more of him. But from what we did see, he wasn't anything special. He was just your average villain. So he'll just go in the don't like tier. But he did kill Diodora. That was his highlight moment. All right, next we got Siegfried. Siegfried is like a cheap copy of Freed. So he's going to be in the mid tier just because he's a copy of Freed. Like, I always prefer the original over a cheap copy. He's a great fighter. He bodied Kiba and Zenobia at the same time. But he's not interesting enough to be higher than mid. Sir Zex is next, and Sir Zex is another they cool character. He's a very cool character. He's a good brother, a good leader. He doesn't say much, but he can fight. He has hands, and he's really strong. He's cool. Then we got Sona. I almost want to put Sona in the elite tier, but I can't. She's like a high they cool character. She just doesn't have enough screen time to get into the elite tier. If they didn't cut off her little rating game from season 3, then maybe she could have made it in the elite tier. I do like what they were doing with her and Saji, and again I do like her scenes with her sister, but she'll be in the they cool tier for now. But next we got Sun Wukong, Sun Wukong is another they cool character. He's got the best debut, he really comes in and just bodies so so. It's really impressive, I mean definitely a they cool character. And then we got another they cool character in Tanin. Tanin is cool just cause of how he looks. I mean, he's got the best character design in the show. He's a dragon with pants on. Like, that's so cool. And I mean, we can't forget about this line from the dub. Well, I slap this monkey around, you guys pound that pussy. Are you the that's like the most iconic line of all time. So Tanin, for sure, they cool. Then we got Subaki. Subaki is like bottom, they cool, high, mid tier character. I don't know which one I should put her in. I think I will put her in the mid tier because I also put Barkiel in the mid tier. And I think she's about on that level. She just doesn't have enough lines to get higher than mid. Then we got Volley. I mean, we all love Volley, right? This is easily the best villain. The rivalry between him and Issei is just beautiful. I mean, this shouldn't be anything new to you. Volley is a goat for sure. You can go to my villains video and you'll hear why I like him so much. But I mean, this should go without saying. Next, we got Volper. I don't really like Volper at all. He kind of looks like a pedophile. For that, he goes in the ass tier. Then we got Rius's mom. Uh, very mid. Very, very mid. I'm sorry. She's like, she does nothing. Definitely just the eh character. Then we have Vritra. Saji's little dragon. It looks cool, I guess, and it was able to take down the fox. I like that they made one of the dragons black, but yeah, just a mid character. Next, we got Zenovia. Honestly, I almost want to put Zenovia in the goat tier. You know, it kind of feels disrespectful to leave her out of the goat tier, but it also feels disrespectful to leave Akino out of the goat tier. So, you know what? We'll flip a coin, and if it's heads, both of them will go in the goat tier. If it's tails, both of them will go in the elite tier. You know what? Forget the coin. They're both going to be in the GOAT tier, actually. I do want to say this about Zenovia, though. She is one of my favorite fighters to watch in this show. Every fight she has is so interesting, and they're all good. It's kind of like Kiba, but she also has a lot of heart. And she's got one of the better dubs, so she's really funny, too. Just an all-around, like, really good character. So yeah, Akano and Zenovia, y'all can go into the GOAT tier. Next, we have Yasuka. Oh my god might be the actual most mid character in the show. I get why you guys like her, but come on. There's more to a character than how they look. And this character is super mid. Actually, the next two are very mid too. Yulong, mid. This guy shows up for some food. That's all he wanted. That was his end goal, was to get some food from Wukong. Zeotikus, Rias' dad, also mid. One thing I did like about him was his voice, though. This guy has, like, the deepest voice of all time. It's crazy. Him and Coco Bill, that would make a good fight right there. Just those two talking back and forth would be hilarious. But his voice doesn't excuse him from being mid. And that's the tier list. Oh, man. It's finally over. This video took so long to make. I hope you all enjoyed me trying to jump scare you. I thought it was funny. If you enjoyed watching, please like and subscribe. And, uh, thanks for watching.